Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Recently at the 49th session of the UNHRC, as you all know, Sri Lanka finally had its break approving the bull of the UNHRC and its High Commissioner who have been sympathetic to terrorists. Right now there are LTT terrorist based agendas still taking shape around the world. The LTT's money is currently making rounds, at least trying to convince the rest of the nations to go hammer Sri Lanka and do the best to make the worthless terrorists' dreams to come alive. Now this is exactly what happened uh, in, in Canada where the LTT loving diaspora fooled the Canadians in Ontario and now have got them to foolishly educate children on something fictitious called the Tamil Genocide Week. There was no genocide in Sri Lanka but apparently they're teaching children in Canada about a, a Tamil Genocide Week that occurred during uh, the war here in Sri Lanka. You know, I've talked very closely about the, this particular fact right here in this program. So if by any chance if you want no more information, the real information about it, please do check our YouTube um, page for that. It has also continued uh, as the LTT lovers seems to have infiltrated the hierarchy of the British government. Now a travel advisory was issued recently. You know, not warning British tourists about fuel crisis, power cuts and other shortages that would be an inconvenience to them when they are here. But they warned of non-existing terrorist attacks. Foreign Minister Professor G. L. Pierce questioned the British government on this joke. A travel advisory which tells the British public do not contemplate a holiday to Sri Lanka because terrorist violence is likely. I'm quoting the exact sentence from the travel advisory. Terrorist violence is likely, so says the British government. Terrorist violence is likely in this country. Now, is this true? I'm still on the subject of truth. Is this true? There are many problems in this country. And tourists are well aware of those problems. Power cuts, shortage of diesel, shortage of gas, all these are facts of life. Tourists are aware of those. And a travel advisory can certainly draw attention to these inconveniences which may be suffered by tourists who are planning a visit to this country. We protested vehemently. If you're talking about the truth, you're lecturing to us about truth, is this true? The answer is, ah, but we have been saying this for two years. And then we said that terrorist violence is very likely. Now we have downgraded that from very likely to likely. Is that at all a convincing or acceptable answer? Well, despite Sri Lanka's efforts to convince the world that it has not committed war crimes in its conflict with a terror organization, one voice, one ardent voice, has been consistently standing up for Sri Lanka. That's none other than Lord Michael Nesby. Now, during his visit to Sri Lanka uh, uh, last week, he told the nation uh, in his uh, launch of uh, the book, that he wrote calls Sri Lanka Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained, that he would try very hard to convince the UK to make public the sections of the Colombo British High Commission dispatches censored by London about the last phase of the one-year offensive that proves Sri Lanka's innocence from the bogus war accusations leveled by the UNHRC. Uh, Colonel Gash uh, in the Hilton Hotel uh, in January uh, 2009 and uh, he said to me I am amazed at what's happening that people are coming across the lines of, at night uh, and I thought no more about it uh, I read about the awful things that were happening <coughs> that allegedly were happening and then later on I thought oh, I'll check on some of this and I checked on it and I uh, also had a freedom of information uh, what we call a freedom of information request. Because he was there every day on the ground. He wasn't walking around the battlefield uh, just for pure pleasure. Uh, he was a very experienced general. It's very evident what the diaspora is trying to do. 
They're now trying to push the Western governments by throwing money at campaigns of local politicians in those countries to pressure Sri Lanka to give in to what their failed terrorist leader couldn't achieve, a separate Sri Lanka. Since they cannot get it done militarily, they are now using organizations like the UNHRC, the British government, and the Canadian government. Lord Naseby from the House of Lords was here in Sri Lanka recently, as I told you before. He also sat down with me um, for the season's premiere of Get Real, which will air tomorrow, to extensively discuss uh, this and other matters. So make sure that you tune on to that program, which will air tomorrow at 7. Lord Maysby is visiting Sri Lanka after a lapse of two years. He's a frequent uh, visitor to Sri Lanka. He has been meeting political leadership and the business community. At the same time, he launched his book, Sri Lanka, Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained, which talks about his unique friendship with the island for over 50 years. Now, to talk more about his visit, I'm now joined by the one and only Right Honourable Lord Naseby from the House of Lord. Uh, Lord Naseby, once again, good to see you and thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me right here on State of the Nation. How has your visit uh, to Sri Lanka been thus far and what was the objective of your visit this time around? Uh, the visit's been very good and I'm very grateful to everybody who put together a tight programme uh, which ensured that I saw all the leading politicians, both in government and in opposition. Uh, I don't take sides. Uh, my, my, my mission is to try to help Sri Lanka, uh, which I've been involved with for 50 years. Um, there you have problems of foreign exchange, which are understandable. You, know, you are a major tourist destination. Uh, people come from all over the world, and all of a sudden, COVID strikes. And now that's on top of having to cope with the war costs. A justified war, which was successfully executed, uh, but nevertheless, all wars are expensive. So you've had a double body blow. And I can see that uh, you're the, all the politicians I've spoken to, and some of the non-politicians, uh, they recognize that you face big problems. And I want you to understand those problems better in order to be able to try and help when I get back to the UK. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Lord Naseby, you met the president during a challenging period uh, for our country. What was his message to the world about Sri Lanka right now? Well, firstly, he is a, a man that I originally met during the war. He's a, a man you can relate to. He is a man that quite rightly, unlike some politicians, uh, he gives short answers, he thinks about it. He is deeply concerned about the ordinary people in Sri Lanka. He knows that they face great difficulty. Uh, we discussed the challenges he faced. And uh, I suggested to him, because he's not really a politician, I am, yes, a politician. And I, one of the suggestions I made was uh, that when he has a new policy, whatever it may be, it has to be sold to the people. And that means you have to go outside Colombo. Uh, I suggested that he should go to the north, the east, central province, Candy, wherever. Um, and we had an open discussion. I've agreed to try and uh, explain to my government uh, what the nature of the problem is and to see in what way we in the UK can possibly help. Lord Michael Naseby, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate your time.